Hi everybody and welcome to Lawyers Rock. Today I'm interviewing Jason Brubaker. Now Jason has founded a website called filmmakingstuff.com and that's a filmmaking website that shows you how to make your film, sell it, distribute it, market it, all types of good information that you need to know and not only the traditional sense but in this new world of digital distribution. Now Jason's been a speaker at places like Sundance, West Dock, and many other places around LA. So he's pretty much an expert on this topic. Let's rock. Hey Jason, welcome to Lawyers Rock. I'm giving the audience a little background, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your business. Hi filmmakers, my name is Jason Brubaker. I specialize in internet marketing for filmmakers. Specifically, I show filmmakers how to leverage video on-demand platforms so that they can market and sell their movies. Uh, you might know me from my very popular filmmaking website called filmmakingstuff.com where I share a lot of this information and I'm really excited to be here. Now your expertise is in high demand across the movie business. What inspired you to start your website? I first started out, like a lot of people, um, when I was right out of college, no other vocation appealed to me more than making movies. And it was after making my first feature with a few guys that I realized there was a strong uh, disconnect between the filmmaker and getting your movie to market. Um, so that was right around 2006. That was the street date of our first feature. And after receiving countless offers from distributors that were trying to just take the, the movie for um, pennies, <laughs> essentially, mm. uh, we decided to put the movie on Amazon and then optimize the website to maximize our sales. Now, I was looking at your website and I saw the model that you have there. Make, market, and sell your movie without the middleman. What exactly does that mean? When I talk about telling filmmakers how to make, market, and sell their movies without the middleman, you know, what I'm really talking about is you as a filmmaker now have the ability to create your own mini movie studio and you can control the product creation and the sales marketing and then the distribution of your product. Now when I talk about a traditional middleman, what I'm talking about is um, in the traditional filmmaking example, you go out, you create a movie, you find a distributor and then you sign away your rights for X number of years and about 95% of the filmmakers I talk to are absolutely unhappy with those types of deals. So in that scenario, the middleman is somebody that comes in at the final hour, picks up your movie, doesn't give you a whole bunch of you know anything in return, but you can at least say, hey, they picked up my movie. Um, I think what's happening now is filmmakers are becoming more savvy, and they have the ability to go out and, like I said, completely source an audience and control the, the production of their movies. Uh, from script to screen. So do you feel that the traditional model of distributing movies is outdated? Um, I think there's always going to be some room for the traditional model, but when we talk about the traditional model, there's a big difference between what the studios are doing and what the independent filmmakers are doing. Um, in terms of a traditional model where you simply make a movie and you hope that somebody picks it up, I think that that model has probably been dead for years, um, but filmmakers are finally catching on. Now, on your site, you heavily emphasize internet marketing. What exactly does that entail? I've always had a knack for the internet, and something interesting happened. When we released our first feature and put a big buy now button on our movie website, I found out very quickly that we could drive traffic to the website, and, you know, let's say out of 100 people, two people buy the movie. Well, suddenly I have a 2% conversion rate, and once I know my conversion rate, I can then really apply some basic internet marketing skills to increase traffic and make more sales. So how does a filmmaker make social media work for their project? The way things are shifting in distribution from a physical product to more of a video on demand product means that the thing that counts the most is your audience, right? So if you're just a first time filmmaker and you don't have a large audience but you know that that's necessary in order for your movie to get notoriety then the next best thing is to cast people that have a strong social media following and work with a crew that also is very active on social media. As a team, the collective is going to help you source more and more people that are potentially interested in your movie. I watched one of the videos on your site and it emphasized sourcing your audience. What does that exactly mean? Whenever I talk about sourcing an audience, what I'm really saying is once you know 
the type of movie that you're producing and you know the types of people you're looking to attract, then your goal is to go out and figure out where these people congregate online and then get them off of wherever that is and into a community that you're creating and you're controlling. So we see this a lot with food documentaries, for example. Um, two that do a really good job is Forks Over Knives. If you visit their website, it's phenomenal in terms of what they're doing to create community, not just for the sale of the movie, but potential sequels as well as merchandise. And you'll also see the same thing at a, at a website called Food Matters. These are really good examples of people that have, have recognized that their movie is not just a movie, but it can be a movement as well. And in terms of narrative features, uh, um, last year I got involved, I was at a company, we were funded in part by William Morris Endeavor, but we got behind a movie called Camp Dakota. And this was a narrative feature starring three famed YouTubers. And in terms of sourcing an audience, what we were able to do, because it, it was starring three YouTubers, we were able to get 85,000 people on an email list that we controlled within the first week. And that's significant because when the movie finally went to market in February um, of the following year, it, it was a phenomenal success by digital standards. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, I was also on your site and I saw the filmmaker checklist that's downloading for free. I thought it was very interesting. Everything a filmmaker should check against. Um, don't give us all 65, but give us a couple examples. Well, I think out of everything, you know, in terms of what I evangelize all the time is the idea that you are in business to create an audience and keep an audience, not just for the movie you're working on now, but for all movies moving forward. So in that checklist, I emphasize a lot of key tactics that you can utilize to help you source an audience and get them on an email list that you control. And then when you make your movie and finally take it to market, uh, you'll, you'll have some key tactics that you can utilize to help you increase sales. Now, Jason, I also know you're a filmmaker and you're an entrepreneur. On this site, I like to give examples of people who have overcome challenges. Can you give us any challenge or obstacle that you've overcome while building your business? Well, if we're talking about building the publication, filmmaking stuff, that's been heavy grinding for about five years. And so through the process of it, I have seen a lot of people that try to start something up and then what happens is they just give up. Everybody wants to achieve some sort of overnight success. And, I, and so based on that context, I would think that the biggest challenge I had to overcome was the belief that if I build it, they will come. And so I saw a real parallel between the movies that I produced as well as creating a publication online to say, if you want to succeed, you have to keep plugging away and you have to view what you're doing as a business. And I actually wrote a whole business plan um, at the beginning and that served me well, at least for the initial startup. Uh, but getting through that rough patch of like, wow, nobody's coming to my website, nobody's paying attention to me, nobody cares what I have to say. I mean, that kind of self-doubt coupled with the fact that so many people out there tell you like, all you got to do is this thing and you'll be rich overnight. Um, that just isn't the case. But the key thing that I think I've learned the most is you have to present value. And in everything that I do, I'm constantly asking myself, what is in it for the people I'm trying to reach? What's in it for them? And if you can kind of answer that with everything that you're doing, you know, that, that's a good start. And then, of course, there's so many other things. I, actually, you have me on this topic. Let me show you. Um, one of the things that I've had to overcome are time management factors. So I actually keep this half-hour hourglass in front of me. So every time I'm working on a task, <laughs> I'll turn it over. You know, I guess it's turned over right here, and I'll watch this, and I'll be like, "All right, I got to get this done within this amount of time." Mm -hmm. That that simple thing is has made me much more productive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I deal with that myself. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure everyone has your contact information. I put it on the video, but Jason, go ahead and tell everybody how they can get in contact with you. And anything that anybody needs from me, just feel free to reach out to me. You can always reach me, Jason at filmmakingstuff.com. Filmmaking Stuff is, is the primary publication that we've been talking about. Uh, so you can visit that at filmmakingstuff.com. And I also have put together some really awesome downloadable goodies and resources at makeyourmovienow.com.